Hello and welcome everyone to another episode of building a React PW application with Workbox. In the previous episode, we learned about how to cache the images as well as the styles and scripts. And in this video, we are going to learn how to cache the third party API request response. So in our case, as you can see that this all of the data, if I do network and XHR, if I refresh, you can see that this particular API request is actually being made and the response is coming from the third party API request and we want to be able to cache this response so it is available offline. Uh, so what we're going to do now is basically register the route. So I'm going to copy this one. Paste it. You can paste it anywhere you want. I'm pasting it here. Um, so again, we are going to register another route for this one, but this time uh, we're going to use URL instead of request. And inside of the URL, then we're going to check if the URL dot origin is the origin for that particular third party API request. So if you take a look, refresh, <coughs> the origin is actually this one. I'm going to take that. I'll paste it here. So that's my origin. And I want to know if the path name starts with this three discover. So I'm going to take this whole thing and then go to my console and say, let me zoom it in. My URL equals new URL. So I'm going to instantiate a new URL object paste it here, my URL. So my URL dot path name. So this is the path name, three discover TV. So I'm going to check if URL dot path name equals three discover TV. Uh, if this is the match, then I want to be able to cache the resource. So I'm going to name it as movie API response. And what I'm also going to do is I'm going to use the cacheable response plugin because I don't want to cache the response if it's not successful. So I'm going to go ahead and use that. So inside of this, I'll say plugins. And over here, I'm going to use the cacheable response plugin. And let's also use the expiration plugin. Okay, uh, let's not worry about the age of this uh, max entries equals one because once we've got a single request, then we don't really need to worry about any other requests because we are not doing load more and stuff. Uh, if we were doing load more over here, like if you scroll down and user used would click load more, then probably we could have increased the number of entries over here to maybe let's say we wanted to uh, cache up to three times uh, user hits load more uh, so we can put three entries but in this case we haven't really created a load more option over here this is just for demo purposes hence uh, that is not really required one request is, is fine so that's your explanation plugin uh, we are doing cacheable response we're going to check and sh make, make sure that the response is successful only then it'll cache otherwise it won't and uh, that's about it that's all we have to do so let's go ahead and test it. I'm going to restart our production server, npm run serve, npm run prod and serve serving the disk folder. And now I'm going to refresh. And then you can see that it says new app update is available. Click OK to refresh because we made changes to our application code. And we've already uh, set up a condition over here saying that if there is an update if there's an update it's going to listen to the uh, event listener as installed installed event and then if there's an update it's going to check with the user that you know uh, let the user know that there's an update available and click ok to refresh and then it's going to reload the page and clear the previous cache so now if you go ahead and check that you can see it's been refreshed uh, do an inspect element check the application tab 
And now you can see that it's already cached the movie API response because if you take a look, uh, that's the name of the cache that we have given it, which is movie API response. And that's the cache name. And then you can see that it has actually cached the response. These are the results available, right? And now if I go ahead and go offline and if I, I'll keep this open by the way, just for the network tab, if I refresh, notice that uh, this is, this request has come from the service worker. You can see that this is service worker. And then you can see all of the movies is available even offline. Um, I'm switched off, uh, my Wi-Fi is turned off and I'm still able to get the cached response of this API, which is absolutely amazing, right? So now you can see that you have full control over this application. You can make you can actually decide and choose what do you want to cache. Uh, you can pick and choose actually. I mean, you don't really have to do everything. Um, so this workbox is pretty cool. It gives you uh, a lot of control over, you know, what do you want to do with your application in terms of, you know, what are the features you want to add and uh, what parts you want to cache, etc. Now the now there's one more thing we need to do. We basically want this ingest manifest plugin to work in production and not in development mode. So for that, what we're going to do is we'll take this whole plugin set and then put this in a variable, call it as const webpack plugins equals this whole array. Okay. And okay. Just format it properly. All right, and then just put this webpack plugin here. Okay. Now, uh, I'm gonna pull this out in just plugin, and I'm going to say that if production process dot env dot node env is production, then take this webpack plugins dot push and go ahead and push this new plugin inside of it. So what this is going to do is basically it's, it's going to ensure that this plugin is added only in case if it's production and not in case of development mode. And, um, because we really don't want to have the PWA features in development. It's only required in production. Okay, so that's it. So I hope you did enjoy this course. And in future, I might create tutorials on background sync, um, etc. But uh, for now, this is good. I hope you did like it. And if you did, please give a thumbs up and do subscribe to my channel if you aren't already. And uh, please do follow me on Twitter. My Twitter handle is CodyTech. And my GitHub handle is Imran Sayyad. And please do start my repository to support my work. Okay. So I'm going to see you in the next video. So I'm going to see you next time. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.